Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to Tifa Snow's Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. My name is Greg Phelps and as usual I'm joined by dementia care expert Tifa Snow and our topic today is sort of a wandering one because I read articles about how some of the states are having a difficult time finding staff for care homes in rural areas because the rural population seems to be migrating because the bigger paying jobs and opportunities are in the cities. There's care homes out in the countries that have lived, people have lived there for years and now all of a sudden they can't get staff. So what happens in those situations? I see some are shutting down. Yeah, um, it's very common to really look at some of the rural settings and people are going, we can't do the staffing. Now, the federal government is trying to do special dispensation for the folks out in the rural areas. But unfortunately, the funding crisis, the care crisis, the staff crisis, and the nursing crisis is making it really challenging for folks to deliver the kind of care that they generally want to deliver, but also is expected of them. And so what we're finding is families are left like, so what are we supposed to do? And often we're talking about now the placement options are far distant, like hours from where they are, Um, like too far that the wife can't go to visit now for lunch. Um, She can't stop in and provide support. So and then the person's in an unfamiliar place with unfamiliar people doing weird stuff. And now we have issues of, of behavior or you know challenge. And so what we're concerned about is the number of these small community settings that are that are the smaller homes where people are going, we can't, we just don't have a way to do it. Either funding is not there or staffing is not there. Um, so we're seeing more and more of these places saying, sorry, we don't have an option. And unless the local community pulls together and figures out, you know, that county is going to do X because they have these folks and, you know, what are they supposed to do? These are these are people that need support and care. Um, it's it's really concerning right now, Greg. And I know it's not just in the U.S. It's up in Canada as well. Uh, I was just I'm yeah. just going to say that uh, I, I have a friend who uh, mm-hmm. whose husband was in Victoria. You're familiar with British Columbia. Yeah. And she was living in Campbell River, which is basically, you know, Ooh. yeah, yeah. You're, you're not going there and back in it. Well, you can mm-hmm. in a day, but you're awful tired. You're awful tired. And you also run the risk of, you know, fog and rain and, and the sea having an issue or there's, you know, you can't miss it's something on that one road because you <laughs> there's one road. And if anybody has an issue with that one road, you're not getting where you want to be. And so, I'm sure yeah, most rural areas in the States are somewhat like that. You know. Yeah. And so what it means is we've isolated the person more. We've isolated the family more. There's more stress and distress. And frankly, we don't have options available. And so this is where, you know, people are going, okay, well, we'll have people stay at home. And it's like, well, I don't know how to break this to you, but they're still going to need care support. And where are we going to get those carers? Because you said you didn't have them for a facility. Where am I going to get them when I split everybody out into their homes? Now I need six or seven or eight or 10 different carers to go into these different places, or I'm just saying, okay, family, it's back on you. But I find most families in rural settings don't make the choice to place until they have exhausted their resources, emotional resources, skill resources, uh, physical resources, environmental. I mean, they, they're, they're, they don't have anything else to give. That's why they did it. Because if they had their druthers, they wouldn't place, they would never do that. But they opted for that because that's what was possible. And there's not new funding available, or even if it was, there wouldn't be people available. So are, are there um, groups being formed in some of these rural areas to mm. become support groups? Uh, I, I know this is something that you could work yep. with. Quite, yeah, somebody phones up and we've got 10 of us and we want to talk to you. What can we do? I'm sure actually, you would welcome yeah, that opportunity. Yeah. Very interesting that you should mention that. Actually, um, like about a year ago or so or more, maybe a year and a half, I actually went to Eastport, Maine and did that for a couple of families where they were like they all had needs and they were going to share the carers. 
And so what we did is we went in and I did training with the carers and then the carers were available and they distributed, you know, and so they had the options of who could do what, when, under what circumstances, and the family would do X. And so it allowed them to, with limited resources, make more use of what's possible. And it included, you know, for some people, what do you do during the day versus the evening? So lots of good stuff can happen, but it requires us to quit thinking in medical terms and start thinking in social support terms. Interesting that you mention that because most care is still based on some sort of a medical model. Get them into bed, get them out of bed, get them washed, get them dry, get them fed, get them occupied for a couple of hours. It's um, for, I hate using the word institution, but it is kind of an institutionalized setting. Yeah. Yeah. It's this belief that people living with dementia are incompetent and incapable. And, And in fact, you know, for a lot of the process of living with dementia, what they need is often just a guide or or demonstration or maybe a, a simple hand under hand to get started or maybe a step to process through. It is, as we say, it is not rocket science, but there is a science and an art, but it's not a medical art. It's not all about the medical stuff. It's about being a good friend and having a friend who's in need and figuring out how to use your friendship and use your relationship to help us get where we want to go, which is to live life well, frankly. So maybe Um, some of the rural areas could consider that. Some of the, maybe mm -hmm. the rural areas could band together and do Zoom calls. There there are opportunities rather than operate in despair. Try the team approach at least. At least build a new family. And the family involves the people who live in your area. And then use Zoom, use monitoring systems. So check in with each other, text each other, you know, build a support system that can help you so you're not feeling so isolated. Because frankly, we need to get everybody involved in the rural community, which we used to do. There were barn raisings and and gatherings and the whole thing. I'm from West Virginia and we know how to do it. We just need to rediscover it maybe. Deepa, if somebody wants to talk about how they can do this, are you going to charge or can you just, you know, can you give me an idea that, uh, okay, we could do this and and let's get a group of people together? So it all starts with a consult, almost always. And then we have we have some options for some free stuff. We have community awareness. We could do some of that stuff online with you. We have opportunities for people to get together and talk. Some of it's free, some of it isn't. But if you don't ask the question, we can't figure out where you fit in the equation and what we can possibly do to support you in the work you're doing. Because we have a lot of resources out there. Trust me, we do. Tipa, thank you, you very are, much. You are so welcome. Thank you, Greg. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast. For more information on this or any other dementia-related topic, go to tipasnow.com. Hi, I'm Tipa Snow, and you just found our YouTube channel and watched one of our videos. I'm the owner and founder of Positive Approach to Care. Thanks for watching. And if you liked, if you have a comment about, or you would, please share it with people you know. Oh, and if you haven't yet done it, consider subscribing. We'll let you know when the next new video comes out. And you might want to visit our website, www.tipasnow.com, where you'll find other resources as well. See you there.